Hello and welcome back to the next episode of Dedunking. Now I got a little criticism in my last video for having it mixed in with my criticisms of Graham Hancock, my personal feelings, and my criticisms of uh, Milo number one and Milo number two. And let it not be said that I'm not capable of accepting a little constructive criticism. So I'm going to change the format here a little bit. I'm going to just do pure debunking in this video. And when I'm done with all eight of the videos where I debunk the debunkers, I'll go ahead and go through the entire series of Ancient Apocalypse and say, this is where I disagree with Graham. This is where I think he really should have done better. This is where he just shouldn't have even tread in these waters at all. But I'm going to save that for the end. And in these, we're just going to go strictly with debunking. So anyway, let's just jump right on into it. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to debunk the debunkers on part one and part two of Ancient Apocalypse since the last one was slow, slow and meandering. If you want to be able to reference this or something, we'll put it all together for the first two episodes. Anyway, here we go. The first thing to talk about is both Milos basically say that Ganong Padang has lava tubes. In this whole episode, they keep calling Ganong Padang a hill. They never mention, as far as I'm aware, that it was an extinct volcano. Volcanoes, of course, famous for their inner chambers. Now what happens inside of volcanoes? Lava tubes. And yes, those chambers most likely would be lava tubes. Graham Hancock asserts that these sites are usually based on some like world naval omphalos, I believe is how it's pronounced, but like some, some almost unmovable site that people would eventually develop into something like this. So it probably is lava tubes underneath it, just like it's a spring under the pyramid at Cholula and there's a cave under Giza, like he talks about. So it's a big nothing burger. Them bringing up this point shows that they don't understand Graham Hancock's arguments on a fundamental level. The next thing that was got wrong in part one was Nan Madal, particularly by Mini Minuteman. He completely misrepresented Graham Hancock's position on it, saying that... Nan Madol is an archaeological site on Pompeii Island. And the reason why it gets lumped into this, you know, lost civilization hypothesis so much is because it is very slightly below the waterline. When the reason that it gets lumped in with all the rest of this lost civilization stuff is because of the legends of lost cities off of the coast and the two pillars that are under about 25 to 30 meters of water. Um, now the pillars are sometimes debated between archeologists, nobody knows for sure, but it's the reason that people go there, not just because it's a few inches of water and it would make his hypothesis sound better, but that's where Mini Minute Man went with that one. Also with Namadal, he claims that the people that are there tell us the stories now of how it was built. But there's really two stories about how it was built, and one of them says it was influenced by a neighbor, that a neighboring island was influenced by it, and the, the radiocarbon dating shows that to be backwards. So something's up there. And the other legend is two sorcerers levitated stones to build the place, so I think we could probably rule that one out, at least between skeptics like myself and the two Milos. So Mini Minute Man just basically misrepresented Graham Hancock and the archaeological knowledge that we have of Namadal in order to make his case, which is not the kind of thing I would expect from a scientist debunking pseudoscientists. Now in part two, we see Milo number one make the same kind of mistake with Cholula, where he's just like, oh, there's a spring there, no big deal. It really shows a fundamental misunderstanding of Graham Hancock's whole position on these structures, and I'll make a video on that stuff later, but for those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know that that's just, it just shows he's a fundamental misunderstanding. And Milo number one makes another pretty glaring error here, as I would see it. Uh, Let's say the idea of a white Quetzalcoatl is not the invention of Spanish conquistadors, but truly came from the original uh, religion of the Mexica, of the Aztecs, of the Nahuatl people, uh, or of, of all Mesoamerican people. It's probably a very widespread, widespread belief. Let's say that the Spanish didn't invent that. They still chose to preserve that myth. They still wanted to promote the idea of Quetzalcoatl as white and foreign. They were burning codices, Aztec and Mayan codices, all the time, destroying them. No hesitation to destroy them. Why preserve this one? Is it because they recognize the sort of political value of this legend for them? 
Stefan Milo asserts that we can't really trust the myths surrounding Quetzalcoatl because of the Spaniards. And I haven't watched the video that he references, but he does a quick little synopsis of it. And basically it's that we can't trust those myths because the Spaniards probably made them up. And if they didn't make them up, well, then obviously they use them for political purposes, most likely, because, I mean, look at all the books they burnt and blah, blah, blah. Well, Graham Hancock and Hans Gruber go to Chochicado together and we see the relief of the story of Quetzalcoatl on the thing and you know no matter what side of the crazy Hans Gruber seems to fall on there d d there is definitely a relief there that would say the Spaniards didn't make the myth up I mean it's 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 right there on the damn rocks come on man the final point to debunk the debunkers on on episode two both Milo's make the claim that there's a very vast distinction between old world and new world pyramids and their uses and there is to a degree but they show that kind of archaeological bias that Graham Hancock talks about, and I don't like to bring that up a lot, but it does show up here pretty heavily. Uh, Stefan Milo just kind of broad brushes it and says, you know, these pyramids are used for that, and those pyramids are used for this, and, you know, just F off with that. But Mini Minute Man, he breaks it down a little bit, and this is where we're, we're going to have a little fun here. Okay, so you list six pyramids there that were in graham hancock's video and all six of those pyramids mini minute man then goes through and describes what they were used for let me break this down the pyramid of giza the ziggurat at ur and the moreau pyramids are all burial structures now of course he's gonna say the great pyramid at giza was used as a tomb and of course i'm gonna say i don't think so tim so we're gonna call that one a draw because i think we can respect that that's where the battle lines are pyramids at moreau he's right about those were used as tombs. The ziggurat at Ur. And Milo, buddy, for somebody with a degree in this, you're killing me. Who was buried there, bud? Look what Google says was buried there. The moon goddess Nana. It is a ceremonial center. Al Kahuachi, El Tajin, and Chichen Itza are all ceremonial pyramids. El Tajin. He's correct. It is a ceremonial center. Kahuachi? It's both. A burial place and a ceremonial center. The temple of Kukukulkan. Um, that one, they found the body in the bottom of it, I think in like 1932. Um, I can't find a picture of the body online, but it's supposedly in this museum down there in Mexico still. I, I, it was used as a burial place. It was found like next to jewels and shit. It looked like, kind of like a royal burial from what the description I can find is. So I'm not saying there isn't a distinction between New World and Old World pyramids. There's thousands and thousands of miles and a big freaking ocean between the two what i am saying is there are similarities too and both of these guys just mm, 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 disregarded it because they were told that the new world's this way and the old world's that way to the point where milo number two don't even do the research he's just like yeah this is what this one's for and this is what that one's for and, and my layman ass can debunk that in 30 minutes on the internet that's not how you go around debunking pseudo archaeology if you really want to debunk this stuff you're gonna have to i don't know dig your feet in now if you're just trying to get views you're doing just fine but if you're actually trying to debunk the stuff you're actually going to have to do some research it's going to take more than just like preaching to the choir because it seems to me like you know archaeologists should be calling you out on that but of course they're not watching the video they're just liking it because they're like yeah graham hancock sucks but he's not he's not hated by the archaeological community not at all all right we'll call that the end of this one guys thank you very much for watching this far i hope to see you next time don't forget to like and subscribe take it easy he wants to be the very best a pyramid there ever was no, Graham, archaeologists don't hate you for trying to find out. They hate you because you're a whiny little bitch. <laughs> no, Graham Hancock, nobody hates you.